Okay, this is where we're going to start. We found an online beat frequency demonstrator. So the uh, the red curve is oscillating at 25 and the blue is at 33. And when you overlay them on each other, you get a sound effect, which you can't hear because it's way too soft. But down here, this is the new frequency of 9. And the relevance is that that's what's happening in this video. In this video, we'll turn the music down as we play, but as we watch the co that corner, this corner, this corner, this corner, this corner, those corners are coming across at um, 34 beats per minute. But the beat of the music is is 25. So that means the corners are coming around faster than the, the pulse of the music. And in our brains, there's a visual beat frequency, visual frequency rotation, and an aural frequency of uh, music. And, and we have extended that to mean uh, that, that uh, that's creating a cognitive beat. And the traditional way you do that is you take the difference between the two frequencies, and that would be 9. And so we're saying there's some kind of a, right down here, cognitive beat of 9 beats per minute. So we're going to play that whole piece, that, that, that again, for you to experiment that with yourselves. We also, um, oh, ladies and gentlemen, this is a recap of Composing in uh, Motion, part, what is it? Where's our little title? Uh, clean Up, whatever part it is, it's Clean Up. So we re-entered, uh, again, thinking about where we're going next with this series. Uh, then we spent a lot of time on the cognitive beat, which you just saw. And then we, are, we started experimenting with connecting two computers. Here's the cable here. Uh, with, an, with a USB to see if we could get one to talk to the other. We did some experiments in Reaper. And we, because uh, what we're trying to do with this is this whole idea of composing in motion is to do stuff that's kind of more, what do you call it, immediate like this. So now we have our voice running through a reverb effect, and then we even um, played the song so that we could hear the music in the background while this echoey person spoke like that. So we did that again. But enough of that. Enough of that. You've seen that before. Uh, so based on our tests, we think we're starting to say, you know what, an audio interface is probably worth getting if we're going to experiment with that some more because reasons. We could probably, and we will, keep working with connecting the computers with USB because we're learning a lot from it. Um, but you have to do a lot of complex, well, initially complex updates to the configuration, and then you have to undo it, which we proved on Reaper there, because when we configured it one way, Reaper couldn't hear our mic anymore, then we unconfigured it, and then Reaper could hear our mic, and, you know, it gets complicated. Not that it won't be complicated. So um, we promised that we would play this for you. Just We just want you to try to kind of count. You know, pay attention to when these corners like hit the midway point and then visually and then listen to when you hear the, the song.
as, as, as we said, the corners are going faster than the song. And there's kind of an interesting interaction that makes it more interesting to listen to. So that concludes today's stream. Our ideas for next time are to keep researching 3D object rotation, music math, and to uh, we have uh, improvisation two and three to share at the upcoming open mic. Acknowledgements to DVA Mechanics who stopped by. Thank you, DVA. And um, we will see you next time. Tune in to see what happens. Do take care, do come back, and do keep on streaming.